Really? That was it. That was the whole lead up. Why this show gassed this up so damn much? You know what? Nah, nah, I'm done with this universe. Blow it up. Blow it up. Good Gotchard? Question mark. It's been weeks, damn near months, since the last time Gotchard's been covered in a non live stream format, and my sub counts have definitely dwindled due to it. But as opposed to my typical Gotchard catch up, I think it's safe to say that Gotchard is a show that just doesn't know what it wants to be. We started things with Kemi's being unleashed onto the world with the malice of humans creating Malgums. But if these acts were seen too heinous for Toei's mandates of keeping it kid friendly, they were just changed to catching Kemi's rapidly and off screen. This later became Gideon bringing it back to old school with some dolls that would instead become the Malgums to dark AI writers from other dimensions. So look, before diving into what continues to be the fault of the show, where things should have gone from, and the initial comments, I'm just going to quickly give ratings for the previous set of episodes, starting with 29. The last episode as of this recording written by Akiko Inoue. Though, she is writing the episode that will debut right after this video goes live, if not even before then. But, this one does get the Agito A. Although the previous episode was still the more hilarious of the two, you can't deny that this one did not have its moments. Especially with the way folks were frozen in their pointing positions. Not only that, but it introduced us to a Malcolm that wasn't really made from evil and didn't manifest from a human Kemi fusion. Surely, something that will get paid off eventually, right? It's the end of the two-parter that is the stopgap between plot points, as... Episodes 30 and 31, we're back in school. Hotaro's got a childhood friend who's thirsty for that soy milk, and a combo amalgam that wants revenge. Toei throws in some Down Bros references to try to win me back, but it's not very effective. We then get to the drama setup to a much better spin-off, which was Romeo and Juliet's play, that by itself gets an Agi Toei, but back to 30 and 31, which used this to play up Rene's jealousy towards New Girl wanting that Hotaro. These episodes bring to light that Atropos is different from her sisters and probably the rest of the Humungulus, where it's the very real possibility that she may actually be Gideon's daughter and not just a construct alone. And while we do get cooking on that plot thread introduced, we get more drama from Rene and New Girl as Rene's feelings towards Hotaro get some building. Lactis gets character development as one of the good guys now and eventually sporting her own Valve Rusher. But before all that, we do get some mind-bending chemis. Surprisingly, this is where I became the most optimistic for the future of the show, as the character dynamics were finally going in full swing and there were some legitimate good things all over, which gives both of these episodes an A. Sadly, I wish the train had kept on going in that direction as opposed to slamming straight into the brick balls of legend, since we get a four-parter next. And why? Why do we even need this? Okay, sure, toys. But seriously, Gatchard isn't even an anniversary season and they're pulling this trope into the canon of the show. This is something that is usually reserved for films, but no, no. It's here within the show itself, and it effectively ruins a lot of the show and further proves that the show is nothing but the biggest cash grab that Toei has ever produced. Remember that Legend special that we got last year? Well, it finds its way to get cemented right smack dab into the middle of the show. Not only that, but characters get new forms, a new villain appears that seems to be central to the story, and it's all just entangled into this messy-ass tonal whiplash portion of the show. Somehow, Legend has a new upgrade that decided to dip out when the 100 attack. Who are the 100? Well, I'm not explaining, it's some Legend shit. 
So now that the Hundred are in our main Gatroid world, just as Clotho and Hotaro have some heart to unhearts. But they get banished to the Shadow Realm by new bad guy, which does allow the two to talk through some shit that really starts to make Clotho try to attempt to turn heel. Or at least consider it. Enough for the two of them to stomp heel on those hundred, and be greeted by Gigast, who grants Clotho more clothes and makes her a knockoff Mortal Kombat character. But the legend shit is only just beginning, because we now have three more members of the hundred, and these guys come equipped with writer belts from past writer shows. Don't ask questions, just consume product. So 33 is mostly just fan wank action, but Lactis does transform into OG Valvarade, brought to you by Low Carb Monster Energy. And as one of the generals goes down, who's there to greet her but... Kamen Rider Zane. Who's Zane, you ask? So, since Zeo hasn't touched anything outside his religion, outside of the live streams, and those president specials that he reviewed, like, I don't know, forever ago, I consumed over 300 cups of rogue energy just to bring you the Outsiders Breakdown! Zane is an AI that is the ultimate good, but anything not seen as 100% good must be destroyed. This is what leads to the creation of the Outsiders by Foundation X. Oh, who's, who's, who's Foundation X? Well, back in Kamen Rider Double, we met those as the overarching villains of the series, essentially built up as a new generation shocker for Heisei 2. They were also showing up in O's and 4's, just to get sprinkled into the background and eventually forgotten. Missed opportunity, one might say, but that's when Takahashi said, I'm cooking tonight, and proceeded to throw charcoal into a microwave and wrap this baby up in tinfoil, sending that baby on high. Outsiders was also made in collaboration with Art from Zero One, who had the potential to become the great leader of the Rewa era, the Kobe and Toei screwed the pooch on that one. But that's when Takahashi said, hold my beer, and proceeded to chug a whole bottle of paint thinner to the tune of Bob Ross ASMR played backwards. Together they gather up dark writers from other universes, but actually, no, because now it's implied that all the universes are a shared universe. You know, that, that's fine and dandy, but that's gonna be until the next anniversary writer shows up and says, look, I got you fam, and proceeds to shit all over the wall and douse him with a breeze because it's gonna be I. We got Asakura, who headshits into American Oja. Odin also ends up giving him the juice. Hiromi is back and ain't fucking with Art, but finds out that Zane ain't much better, so he's back with Art. His ass comes back as well, not to eat the noodles, but to get a proper common writer form this time. Demoted to Bronze Drive and Bitch Boy Brain. Oh, and I guess Evolve's coming back as well. On the side of Zane, we have Tachibana, who now is the head of board and is doing some wacky shenanigans with a lot of writer cards. Also, finally gets his game for Watch out there, Tachibana, or you might end up getting joker vibe. George from Greenwise is always building some shit, so he's here as well, making these drivers. And punish Sakurai Yuto, because his future is so jacked up that he went to the... Wait a second. The, the Yuto from Deno was already a misplaced past version of that timeline's Yuto, so this... Future Yuto is actually past Yuto in the past already. So like a good 10 or so years prior to these events in this parallel timeline. So wh why are they acting like he's technically from the future? This can't be the original one. He's the one that gave him Cause he's already this, this is no one this why, why outsiders why? You from Go to you, I check out. Where was I again? Oh yeah, yeah, Gadchard. And the mess it's become with this. You know, I'll just say that it makes sense in an anniversary show as the expectations are there for everything that's happened. But when you throw it into a show proper, it just gets messy. 32 is a C, because although the plot threads between Clotho and Lactis, along with the character development she had with Hotaro was good, the add-ins of the 100 and the suddenness of Gigas really just drags it down. 33 is a D. If you like fan wank and suits torn up so badly that they need tape and dreams to hold them together, this is your episode. 34, and at this point, I'm just sick of this shit, and the continuity of it all just continues to hurt my brain. It just can't compute what's going on, especially having Arc 1 be involved. More legend forms, Kaguya, being inserted into the plot, etc, 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 F. 35. Arc 1 Kemi. 
Kaguya taking out his family jewels and day drinking in school. World ending timer bombs that get defused with Rider kicks. And Hotaro is pregnant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's another F. Oh yeah. Can I also just add? Fuck the winter movie. The show made it seem like it was so relevant to the plot. But you know that old guy that kept brushing his ring? 2,000 years old had a hate boner for Ace. And even after all that time, couldn't even climb up to the top of the Alchemist Society? And remember, Rene meeting her dad and getting that ring? Look, she, she took a Kemi induced nap and got that shit. Man, fuck that film. Fuck that film. Also, Jamatos! How are the Jamatos? Where was Daichi? Bad Toei, stop. Do I even talk forms? No, 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 get, get, get away. I'm just gonna pass on a lot of this. Because look, even though Lactis is now Valverade, it's a disappointment. They really should have just shined that shit up and maybe make it a little bit more form-fitting given that Lactis has the more feminine look going on for her. That shit would have been translated to the suit, but nah. Slap a Monster Energy Drink logo on that. So, within the show itself, I'm like, Maybe I'm just being overtly negative, as everything seems very unfulfilling and very reactionary to the times. So I decided to ask in other Discord communities that I'm on if anyone had anything positive to say about Gachard. So I stopped by the Tokucast server and pressed the question and was completely ignored. Then, on the Radio Sentai Cast Ranger Discord, I was told that the characters are fun. But I'm like, the characters are at their best in non-main story things. That Class 3G special? Show should have just been done in that style the whole last time. That Romeo and Juliet side thing? Great. But in the show? Nah, that ain't it. So, if I were to burn Gotchard down to the ground and fix it, first problem has to be the Kemis. The beginning of the show's problems was that the show was bloated when it came to forms, and the bonding aspect of the Kemis just felt a little lost. How about instead of having the Kemis be forms, they should have been summoned as a support unit instead, with Gotchard having the ability to fuse Kemis that others couldn't, thus not becoming the wild forms himself, but summoning the wild forms to assist. Now people will ask, yes, but from a marketing perspective, that devalues the cards. And the answer to that is Kid Icarus Uprising. See, back in 2012, this game used cards as a side thing that utilizes the 3DS's cameras to project the creatures on the screen. And with them, if you put two cards against each other, they pursued in an auto card battling game, which was simple, but the gimmick was neat. If Bandai released a phone app that did the exact same thing with Kemi cards, they could have added a neat little feature, especially when you consider that that company already had the animations for these cards. Then you just gotta have two opposing cards go against each other, and then have baked in codes based on percentages to determine which card wins. Look, money would be made like crazy. And it's about as minimal effort as you can get making a game out of those cards. The show itself hasn't really capitalized on the villains had here and even the plot threads given to us. Since as of right now, we know nothing of Hotaro's dad, why he himself was in the Ouroboros realm when he was a kid and could do alchemy. And of course, as I'm recording this, the latest episode, 36, is out but hasn't hit the translations yet. So I'm not really gonna usually go in as far as I normally would because, look, I, I haven't seen that shit and I don't go in raw. So the majority of the speculation I might have had would have probably been answered by the time this video goes live, so there's no point. Instead, I pose a bigger question and that is, if Hotaro was incubating that egg since he was a kid, or manifest it after prolonged use, then why the hell doesn't Gotchar Daybreak already have it? Unless, of course, this has more to do with the forbidden alchemy that was used to make Steamliner into Tenliner. But either way, the, the concept of the show really should have focused more on the school aspect. So let me just backtrack a little bit because, yeah, yeah, let's 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 see what Gotchar could have been. And look. When it comes to school settings, it's usually not my cup of tea, because I've been out of school for a long time. But if Boom Boom Jer can hit us with the Pokemon allegory of it all, then Gachard could have hit us with the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX!
And the thing is, I do feel that the head writers chosen for this might not have been a good fit. The last video I did, I praised Akiko, but I would have doubted that they actually would have given her the head writer show without putting in some work beforehand. So on that side of things, I really think that Aragawa could have been that guy. Most known for doing a lot of Sentai, like Aba, Deka, Gokai, Akiba Ranger, and more recently Kira Major, but most forget that he was also the head writer of Kuga. So the amount of variety he's done would have came in clutch for a series like Gachar. If not him, then bring back Nakashima, who did Forze. But for you anime weebs, he also did Gurren Lagan and Kill la Kill. Overall, having the school not be a central focus was a missed opportunity, especially with the class size being so small. They could have had it be a proper classroom set with all the students being alchemists. Where, as opposed to a secret back entrance that no one uses anymore, the door could have just looked like a regular classroom door, but if you have a ring, it opens a portal to the real classroom. Such, you have various different students just interact with the chemis, but most being somewhat jealous that Hotaro is the only one that can make the fusions. This would have allowed the chemis to have a proper bonds and development, but with the eventual trust building. Hotaro would also have to build his own trust not just with the chemis, but with the other students to be able to borrow their partners. The bad guy could have still been Gideon, but in order to combat Gachard, he could have just had a rival school and classmate, with most of the amalgams being caused by the students of his class corrupting the students from Hotaro's class. But both schools would still fall under the Alchemist Society umbrella, making it obvious to us the viewers who the real enemies are. Something of that sort would have at least been a little bit more properly paced than what the show has done thus far, as it seems to be whiplash in tone, especially if you check out the early episodes and see the drastic change the show has gone through from arc to arc. It really seems like this show doesn't really know what it wants to do. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Godchart so far. I know a lot of folks are either loosely keeping up with it or not at all as the Toei sales seems to have hit a slump and I really think that had Toei or Bandai came up with an AR reader for the cards similar to Kid Icarus Uprising, there would be a lot more people definitely invested. Especially for them Legend Rider cards? It's not like they don't have a ton of these models just available unless they stuck to their Kemi designs. Which, either way, I would have loved taking AR photos with the Kemis, similar to how Niantic does this with Pokemon Go and Monster Hunter Now. Like, if y'all need some help, Toei, hit up your boy and we making that bread that I can't eat but definitely would spend. So, those are my thoughts, what are yours? What are your thoughts on the last batch of Gachard stuff thus far? Just for the hell of it, what about Outsiders? And, you know, that, that Gates Gachard film? Anyway, that's it for me. I'll see you in another month or so for more Gachard. Yay.